there's a dude named Evan Tanner. He was a UFC champion. He was a very interesting guy. He would go on a walkabout, try to find himself, and he did one in Death Valley. He liked to gamble a little bit, and he was into the drinking. And I remember when he would send these things out on MySpace because they would be time-stamped. You could see when he sent them out. You could follow the timeline and go, Evan, there hasn't been a two-hour window here in the last three days where you've not posted something. Have you not slept in three days? He just never really cared too much for Amarillo. And I think a lot of it had to do with, with him more than Amarillo because, you know, he found the same problems anywhere he went. You just, I'd tell him, you just can't blame Amarillo. You know, he found the same problems. In yeah, I'm not, California. I'm not a fighter. I'm not in this to, for personal glory. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting being, you know, kind of, it's kind of cool to be recognized, you know, for the people, to rec you know, for people to recognize you. And it's, it's nice to be acknowledged for, you know, your skills, you know, for that, that your achievements. It's nice to be acknowledged for that. Uh, but I'm not in this for the, the glory of it. I'm not in it to be rich, you know, for the attention. I'm not, I, you know, it's, it's hard to say. It's, I just have this, just have this sense of something. This, this, it's like behind, it's behind, uh, it's behind everything. It's a sense that this is what I need to do. I have to do it. I need to do it. This is the story of Evan Lloyd Tanner, former professional American mixed martial artist and one of the first ever middleweight champions of the UFC. Tanner won the UFC middleweight championship at UFC 51, stopping David Terrell with strikes in the first round, a fight in which he entered as a heavy underdog. He is widely considered a pioneer in the sport of MMA and one of the first fighters to use elbows as an effective striking method during ground and pound. Pound on people with, el with his elbows. So he was probably one of the first guys to do that and be effective with it. Tanner is considered to be somewhat of an anomaly in MMA as he began his professional career with a large degree of success despite primarily learning the sport via instructional videotape. He was also one of the first MMA fighters to use social media as a platform to connect with fans. But although the story of Evan Tanner is a positive one given the success he found during his career, it is also lined with tragedy as Tanner would tragically pass away just a few months after his last UFC fight in 2008 at the age of 37 while undertaking a solo camping trip into the infamous Death Valley region of California, seemingly extremely underprepared. Evan Tanner, with a wrestling background, began fighting in 1997 when he was convinced by friends to enter a local MMA tournament in his hometown of Amarillo, Texas. He would go on to win the tournament by defeating three fighters in one night, including future UFC heavyweight contender Paul Briantello. After his initial success, Tanner taught himself submission and grappling techniques using only instructional videos created by the famous Gracie family. He continued to fight in local shows and tournaments in Texas and Iowa before traveling to Japan to compete professionally in the Pancrase organization. Evan Tanner would win five fights overseas and competed in the USWF once more before being asked to join the UFC. Tanner made his UFC debut in 1999 at UFC 18, submitting Daryl Gawler by rear naked choke in the first round. With three victories in the UFC, Tanner received a title shot against UFC light heavyweight champion Tito Ortiz at UFC 30. Unfortunately, Evan Tanner was knocked unconscious just 32 seconds into the first round by a high-level slam by Ortiz. After the Ortiz loss, Tanner began training with the Oregon-based team Quest, which is most notable for being the home of UFC legends Randy Couture and Chael Sonnen. Tanner defeated Robbie Lawler at UFC 50 in October 2004, submitting Lawler with a triangle choke. Afterward, Tanner decided to begin training on his own. He fought for the vacant UFC middleweight championship against David Terrell at UFC 51 in 2005, defeating Terrell to become the first UFC middleweight champion since Murillo Bustamante held the title before leaving for Pride Championship in 2002. Tanner would have an up and down career since winning the title and failed to defend the belt altogether, mostly due to his seemingly increasing alcohol addiction, 
Many teammates would speak of Tanner showing up to training sessions hungover and reeking of alcohol. Although no one would question his work ethic when it came to being in the octagon and on the mats, Tanner bounced around several gyms and jumped in and out of retirement while eventually setting in the infamous Brazilian gym Shootbox. Tanner also unveiled plans to set up a mixed martial arts training camp at his house in Gresham, Oregon for disadvantaged athletes and young men at risk. For his plan, in 2007, he announced that 12 athletes would reside in the house from six different weight classes. In a March 2007 interview with MMA Weekly, Tanner was asked about the possibility of fighting again, but said he wanted to focus on developing his foundation. He said he would be training year round with the athletes he was coaching and that it might only be a matter of time before he returned to the UFC. However, in May 2007, his fighter development program was put on hold by Tanner, citing his own training and bad experience with the first fighter that was invited to the house. Tanner announced through his official website that he would return to active competition and attempt to regain the UFC middleweight title again. Speculation arose that Tanner would return to the UFC in December 2007 at UFC 79 against Dean List. However, Tanner dismissed the report as he admitted to battling an alcohol addiction. He left shootbox and began training at Hard Knocks Kickboxing in Las Vegas. In November 2007, Tanner announced the signing of a four-fight deal with the UFC. However, he chose to accept no corporate sponsorships and instead started Team Tanner an exclusive fan club for his upcoming fights. His first fight back in the UFC was at UFC 82 where he lost to Japanese fighter Yushin Okami by knockout in the second round. And in what would be his final fight, Evan Tanner lost to Kendall Grove in a split decision at the Ultimate Fighter 7 finale on June 21st, 2008. It would be the fifth loss in his last 10 fights. In a post-match interview, he said he felt flat throughout the fight and that he had begun wondering if his years of serious alcohol abuse had damaged his body past the point of which he could compete at the level he once had. In the summer of 2008, Tanner announced plans for a solo trip to the Imperial County, California desert. After concerns were raised by his online following, as well as his close friends, he responded on his social media pages with the following. It seems some MMA websites have reported on the story, posting that I might die out in the desert, or that it might be my greatest opponent yet, etc. Come on guys, it's really common down in Southern California to go out to the off-road recreation areas in the desert, about an hour away from LA and San Diego. So my plan is to go out to the desert, do some camping, ride the motorcycle, and shoot some guns. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. A lot of people do it. This isn't a version of Into the Wild. He apparently purchased a dirt bike and rode into the desert region west of Palo Verde, California to go camping. According to his manager, Tanner called that afternoon to say that his bike had run out of gas and that he would walk back to his camp, telling his manager not to worry as it was a manageable distance by foot. This conflicted with a later report that his bike was actually found at the camp. He reportedly intended to refill his water bottles at Clap Spring before heading back to his campsite, but was unaware that the spring was usually dry, except for on rare occasions. Temperatures that day reached 118 degrees Fahrenheit, but in a text message to a friend, he said he thought he could make it back to his camp if he traveled during the later hours of the evening. He told friends to contact authorities if they didn't hear from him by the following morning. When his friends did not hear from him the next morning, they reported Tanner missing and a search for him began. His body was discovered near Clap Spring with empty water bottles by a marine helicopter on September 8, 2008. The Imperial County Coroner determined the time of death to be between late September 4 and early September 5, but the legal date of death was recorded as September 8, 2008. What makes the story of Evan Tanner and his trip out into the desert strange was his seeming lack of preparation and conflicting information about his final hours. Tanner's motorcycle was at his camp and within close proximity of ample water supplies. This is a direct contradiction to the conversation he had with his manager and friends regarding both his motorcycle and water supply. It has been speculated by many, including former friend Joe Rogan, that Evan Tanner suffered from heat stroke while out in the desert and subsequently became disorientated and possibly even started walking, thinking that he needed to gather water from a nearby oasis despite having an ample supply close by. I think it's the hottest spot on earth. Heat stroke, apparently, or 
affects your ability to think straight. So he couldn't figure out where the water was. The way it's described, it's like, it doesn't matter how tough you are, your brain doesn't work right. And then he died. The Imperial County Sheriff's Office did give an official cause of death as heat exposure. If we look at some of Tanner's interviews, he did seem to be a very thoughtful individual thinker who held many views of the world that seemed somewhat out of the box when it comes to not only professional athletes, but more specifically cage fighters. The mixed martial arts, if I'm successful in the mixed martial arts, if I'm winning fights, if I win championships, then then people are paying attention to what I'm doing. There's an audience out there. There's, you know, there are people that are ready to hear, you know, they're willing to hear, willing to listen to what you have to say. There was a lot of speculation at the time as to whether or not Evan Tanner's ultimate demise was intentional due to the strange circumstances in which his body was recovered. Evan did a good job of using his wrestling, taking people down and really using his elbows. I can remember those matches where he just pounded on people with his, elbow, with his elbows. But I know he had a bunch of demons that he battled. So uh, he did a good job trying to juggle his life, trying to, to calm those demons down. But yet Evan was a pioneer, did very well with the little amount of training he had. Yeah, there's a dude named Evan Tanner. He was a UFC champion and uh, he was a very interesting guy, very interesting guy. And he would do these things that he would go on a walkabout. And you get to know him as a fan too. And I think it's one of the, the things that people love about fighters. So you get to see, you, you know, you see the actual whole human being. There's no place to hide.